Back on the 21st of April 2019, Manchester United were humiliated by Everton 4-0 at Goodison Park. Fast forward a year later, the coronavirus has put a stop to what was a sensational run of form from Man United this season. There's no doubt that United have improved under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer this year and certainly since January and the arrival of a little Portuguese Magnifico. What I want to do in this video is focus on the positives I've seen this season, where United have improved, because let's be honest, right now, we could all do with a little bit of positivity. So make sure you subscribe to United People's TV if you are new. But let's take a look at what I think and where United have improved this season. Before I start, I want to thank The Athletic for sponsoring this video. I've been enjoying their coverage of the coronavirus, how it's affecting the Premier League. There's an article recently by David Ornstein and Laurie Whitwell offering you a bit of an insight into the inner goings on of these meetings. Will the Premier League be completed this season? Make sure you follow The Athletic for any sort of updates on it. Some nostalgic pieces on Fergie too, and we all need some sort of distraction. So if you follow the link in the description, you can get a seven day free trial. If you don't like the content at that point, you don't need to pay for it, but if you do want to, you get 50% off with the link in the description. So make sure you follow that. It will help United People's TV help us get through this. And you might enjoy a bit of the content as well. But let's take a look at United's improvements across the course of this season. Now, in terms of improvements, there's some in defence, in midfield, in attack as a team overall, which I will go into. But the main one for me surely has got to be how much better United have been in the transfer market. I don't think that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has made a bad signing. Dan James, cheap. I think he'll be an excellent squad player when we sign a top draw right winger. He shouldn't be playing this much, but we didn't sign enough players. Aaron Wan-Bissaka, substantially approving as an attacking fullback as the season progresses. Already one of the best, if not the best, one-on-one -on -one fullback in the world at right back. Harry Maguire, he has grown into that role. Overpriced, yes. Overhyped, I think that would be unfair. He's made a substantial difference in the heart of our defence. And Bruno Fernandes, what an incredible signing that is. I'm still devastated it didn't happen in the summer, but at least it's happened now. And the difference he made in those first couple of months before the coronavirus put a halt to it was sensational. And Odi Nogalo, everybody laughed at United, everybody laughed at him, but he is banging in goals and he's almost becoming an immediate cult figure at United. So it's amazing what a difference to the makeup of a team having the right recruitment can do. I mean, who would have thought it. But focusing on, I suppose, the areas of the pitch, look at defence. Harry Maguire, everybody said he was overpriced. And they were correct. He's not Virgil van Dijk. He's not at that level. Can he become that level? I don't think so. I think van Dijk's on a different level altogether. But Maguire has made such a difference. And as this season has gone on, he's become more and more like the leader that I expected him to be immediately. Maybe that was unfair. He needed that settling in period. But he's improved. I'm starting to see the runs out from the back with the ball at his feet. He's been fantastic. And so is Wan Bissaka. 50 million was an absolute bargain as far as I'm concerned. I'm just as excited, I suppose, as I was before Shaw got his injury and what he could have become at left back for United. Sadly, I don't think that's going to be the career trajectory of Shaw now. But Wan Bissaka, wow. He's massively improving as the season goes on. And as a defensive unit, it's not just the fact that Wan-Bissaka is playing well and Maguire is playing well. Bailly, when he's come back in, the defence as a whole, only two goals conceded in our last 11 games and seven clean sheets. United as a team, a collective defensive unit, are substantially better than we were and have been for a long time. And under Mourinho, we were excellent in defence, but that's because we were so defensive. We've scored five goals three times. In the last, no, five or more goals, 6-0 against Tranmere, three times in the last 11 games. We're attacking at the same time, but our defence is staying solid. And certainly, the quality of the midfield improving has helped that substantially. Fred has been magnificent this season, by comparison of his first year as a United player. Fred's been brilliant. And I think in Pogba's absence, we needed somebody to step up. We didn't know whether anybody would or were able to, but Fred has stepped up massively to the point where he's now an indispensable part of this United midfield and Pogba will obviously come back into the team because his quality is just on a different level to any other United midfielder maybe apart from Bruno Fernandes now but Fred has been fantastic and deserves a lot of praise. Scott McTominay prior to his injury his career growth this season was fantastic. The sort of 
fight in midfield that I think we've just not had for so long. And that's why it's been so easy to play against United in midfield. He can just run over us. You can't do that with Scott McTominay in midfield. And Nemanja Matic, give him credit when he came into this form in the last 11 games as a purely defensive midfielder. He's been a big reason why that defence has improved so much. And we all know the man who's made the big difference, the architect, the inspiration, Bruno Fernandes. Since he's come in, and this is, for me, the single biggest difference that he's made, everybody seems to know their role much more than they did before. Nemanja Matic sitting there as a holding midfielder, nothing more. Fred is a supporting midfielder alongside Bruno. Martial knows his role. He's smiling more because he's scoring more. United just seem to know their shape far more with Bruno Fernandes in the team. And as a midfield collective unit, we're far stronger. Just rewind to where we were a year ago, to where we are now, and we don't even have Paul Popper in the team. It's fantastic, the progress we've made in that respect. And if you go into the attack as well, it just continues. Marcus Rashford was having his best season to date. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer clearly gave him the confidence that he needed, because he's a confidence player. I think nine out of 10 attacking players are confidence players. And Rashford was showing a sort of maturity this year beyond his years taking this team forward. Without Lukaku, we needed him to step up and he stepped up. And prior to his injury, he was by far United's best player this season. Obviously, it led to him being injured because he was being overplayed and that was a problem in itself, which I'll get into later on. But Rashford's been brilliant this season. Anthony Martial, when we needed him to step up with Rashford's injury, he stepped up. And since the arrival of Bruno Fernandes, Martial looks like a different player altogether like somebody's finally playing on his wavelength. And maybe that's why he's been frustrated so much previously. Shoulders down, but his, his head is up at the moment. And United, look at Greenwood as well. Greenwood's had an absolutely fantastic breakthrough year. And I think Solskjaer deserves credit on how he's managed that. It's been a few games where I've said, why is Greenwood not starting here? But in terms of the overall season, Mason Greenwood's going to be delighted with how it's gone. He's going to be delighted with how much football he's played. And he hasn't played too much to the point where he gets thrust into the limelight and expected to do it all straight away, a bit like Marcus Rashford was. And maybe that's why Rashford's career stalled somewhat for a couple of years, but this year it's blown up. And this year, Greenwood's announced himself. And then you've got Odi Nogalo. The guy really is a fantastic January signing, and I would definitely give him a 12-month contract. It's not just the attitude or the fact that it almost looks like he played for United for free, but Nogalo's scoring some cracking, cracking goals. He really, really is. And I think that attitude is going to be infectious throughout the team. Probably not the best use of the word infectious at the moment. But Igalo has been fantastic. And Dan James, brilliant at the start. Huge dip. Coming into form again. Dan James is another player, a bit like Marcus Rashford, who suffered from being played too much, too often. And we don't have any other quality on the right wing. But look at all of that. The defence, you can talk about the individual improvements, the midfield too, the attack too, but what it means is as a collective unit, as a team, this United team is looking so much stronger. And Bruno Fernandes has been the catalyst of that since he arrived in January. But it's not just the fact that we've only conceded two goals in our last 11 games or the fact that we had seven clean sheets. We've also beaten City twice. Chelsea, <laughs> we've Scored five goals in two games and six goals in one game. It's not just a defensive unit. It's a team collective unit from front to back. United are so much stronger now than we were a year ago. And had you asked me at the start of the season, was that possible with Paul Popper only playing, what, like 10, 20% of it? I would have said absolutely impossible. But United have done it. And United did it without Lukaku. I've done it without Pogba. All credit to Solskjaer and the players for making that happen. And Solskjaer, of course, is not exempt from criticism. I think too often this season, his substitutions have been slightly poor in game management. The fact that still Lingard and Pereira are getting too much game time. There's clear improvements that still have to happen. But from where we were a year ago to where we are now and where we are just sitting here waiting for football to return, we're in such a stronger position. And it begs the question of whether or not Solskjaer, if he was given the backing and he made the right signings, can he continue this improvement? Or is this just a Bruno Fernandes bubble that we're living in at the moment? 
and that it's all going to return to normal when football's back. Let me know where you stand on this. But for me, I've seen substantial improvements in a lot of key areas. I've seen patterns across the season. It's not just since Bruno's arrival, but he's the man that's made the watershed moment. He is the watershed moment. The difference. And your best players make all the difference, but it seems like United are getting it right. From front to back as a collective unit, as a team, we're in such better shape than we were a year ago. And that's down to all the key signings and all the improvements across the pitch. What do you think about Solskjaer going forward? Do you think these improvements are long-term or is this just another bit of form that we're in, just like it was at the start of Solskjaer's reign? Let me know what you think in the comments below. But the coronavirus has stopped football. If there are any video ideas you have, let me know in the comments below. Got another, what got an interview coming up. Going to be talking about the youth players. We're talking about what United's best team is going forward when everyone's fit. Lots to discuss, but I want to know ideas from you in the comments as well. Make sure you stay safe and make sure you socially distance. As I said in the last video, listen to the advice, people. It's not just something you can ignore. Lives are at risk, so make sure you follow it. And make sure you comment below about Solskjaer's season.